I started this video on another Jeep and turns out the people lied to me said the motor was bad I mean said the starter was bad and it turned out the motor was a lot smooth up so gonna go find another Jeep and feed it in well I don't think I even mentioned it I said I'm, I'm gonna make a remote control Jeep so we can do cool stuff with it's actually raining fixing a storm so I've had a had a gonna have a while to work on it tonight yep go find a Jeep Picking out a Jeep out of all these ain't easy. There's all, oh my gosh, there's so many different choices, but I think this is gonna be perfect. And I will tell you why when we get in the shop, because like I said, it's fixing to rain, but it's got a big motor. Hope it ain't locked up. Uh, got some nice wheels. Wow, it's actually, well, kind of clean. But like I said, I'm gonna try to weasel it out of here and get it in the shop, and then I'll explain why I'm using it. <laughs> this jeep one of the, well one of the reasons the dana 35 comes in these v8s uh can't really sell them the five twos i've been doing this like 13 14 years actually 20 if you think about it just not for a business but the five twos just don't go bad i've sold maybe two of them uh the transfer cases they're the same way i mean i had a whole tote tank full of them i just scrapped them they're all good so yeah so maybe the people didn't lie on this jeep i'm gonna see what we'll, we'll, see what it'll do I do not understand why it's so hard for people to tell the truth. She been run hot. Oh, go find a third Jeep. Rode my little dirt bike down there, found one. I'm tired of getting ones that don't run, so this one actually runs. I can't wait for you to see, it's kind of funny. Dex told me to film him driving by. I'm not sure what he's up to. Here he comes. <laughs> Something new every day. Is it on fire? Yeah, I think it leaks a lot of transmission fluid. That was like me patting the gas. It won't take a gear. It's gonna be a good unit. I had to run across the road. I got out. I thought it was on fire. You can see the light. But this one, I bought it from my buddy. He's not a body man. He thought he was going to be a body man and kind of give up on it. So it runs and drives. It's a wreck. So I'm just going to use it and tired of screwing with people that lied to me. <laughs> when I got the Jeep, it had a I think like a four inch lift on there. No, spacer lift, whatever. But I'm just gonna put some springs back on it because it's sitting on the ground. 
and I don't really want to work on it like that, but got some used shocks and it's gonna be a cool project there. Custom adapter plate. It's so nice working on a vehicle you don't care nothing about. You just hook the ratchet strap in there, pull the axle up. Man, it's gonna blow us away. Got it sitting back on its wheels. Well, sitting back normal anyways. Gotta get all this crap cleaned out. But, uh, let's see. Now, I ain't got everything laid out, but I'll show you my RC car collection. It's uh, it's about as bad as my Jeep collection. You know, most people have one battery charger. I have all these are battery chargers. And therefore, me and my friends, we played with them too. So I'm gonna walk upstairs and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if you walk upstairs from my shop, it's, the roof should have been higher kind of close but it is what do we got so this is the table this thing i don't even know how many square feet it is but most of them are my brothers there's all of our trophies from well rc's i think and then the dog moved in up here but pretty much all these from here over are mine and tires we got garbage bags full of tires all these things are full of parts i mean well radio shack went out of business we bought these little things out and uh yeah so let's see i think it's still yep it's still laying here so let me this is the contraption i have to get it turned on 4 throttle body and i know it looks like a jumbled up mess i don't really care what it looks like it's just gonna do its purpose and i'm sitting there i've been trying to find a motor that had just enough power to the steering wheel so i sit there and thought 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 i actually ordered one i'll show you when i find it but it was about that big so I got a wiper motor and let me get it turned on and I'll show you what it does. I hope I can explain this to where you can understand it, but when you get it on the vehicle, it all makes sense. The throttle, this is pretty self-explanatory. Give it gas, this thing does the throttle. Actually pretty fast. And the brakes, this is the part where it's gonna get hard to understand. I'm sure there's probably an actuator, but I'm trying to keep this budget friendly. Um, what I'm gonna use is an air, it's like an air cylinder, it's like a hydraulic cylinder, but for air. And I'm trying to keep them universal so we can share vehicles with them. But I wanna mount it to where the seat mounts and it'll push on there. So I'm gonna have like a relief valve or whatever. So you can sit here and bump it and the AC compressor from the Jeep is gonna create pressure to activate the brakes. I hope it's gonna work. This is all drained up in my head. Like I said, this, pretty, this I don't know, this stuff excites me. But when you hit the brakes, you can see I've created slack right here so it can have a wiggle room and that's a switch. That is gonna activate a relay that triggers the AC compressor and then it'll send air and I hope it works. And then my steering, this is a, I've actually hooked it backwards. The throttle is a steering and the steering is a throttle. So how it works. But this normally powers like a motor for, you know, a remote control truck or whatever. So it should be able to handle that no problem. And well, let's see, play the steering wheel. Why is it not working? I pulled the wires out. So if you can imagine, I got a chain and sprocket. And this is funny. I went and sit in the Jeep on the lift and I sit there and turn back and forth as fast as I could for I think 20 seconds. And then I counted like 18 times, multiplied that by three. So I think that's what it, the average human can turn. Crap, and I forgot, 60 times, no. Whatever it come out to be, I don't remember. I've got it wrote down somewhere on pen and paper. But I was trying to do all this math to get something from the RC cars to turn with. But I did the math and I think I gotta go three to one on this motor, I counted its revolutions. But you can see, when you turn the steering wheel, if you turn slow, it'll turn just like you would, you know, the normal steering wheel. And one way it's faster than the other. But I think I think it's gonna drive nice, honestly. Got everything laid out. I'm sure I'm missing something, but there's sprocket. Like I said, that should be three to one. These are gonna be my pivots for that. I actually found an old lug nut for my trailer. That's the only one I had that big. Haven't test fitted that, so I got to test fit that. And I'm probably gonna start with that so we can rev it up, sound cool. All right, a couple of minor setbacks, nothing major. Uh, let's see, first off, the air temperature sensor, it was getting close to that right there. And I went and grabbed a channel throttle body spacer 
that'll probably fix it but i didn't have bolts that'll fit down right inside of there and the second one is i forgot i completely forgot about the kick down cable i think the transmission probably still will work without it we're going to try it just won't have kick down feature but worst case that's a cheap servo so i'll probably get like a new monster one or something whatever they call them things and the map sensor i knew that was gonna be a problem but i mean that's how they did it before they had it mounted on throttle body so no big issue there and also that too if somebody's gonna hate on it that's how they're done nowadays instead of getting the hot air off the aluminum intake or whatever but oh uh, rip it up man this stuff's so exciting fire it up probably some bugs to work out but check it out Got my relay built for uh, the brakes, the air compressor, air conditioning, whatever you want to call it. But that's what I was going to say. I'm trying to make this as universal as I can because let's just face it, that Jeep's probably going to jump who knows what. But take the, uh, take the relay out and these should shove in between where the relay makes contact. And then that one you don't use. And then that's, that's the hot that activates the relay and the hot that supplies power for that. Then got this wire to run over to the throttle body, and when it makes contact uh, with the brake switch, it'll ground it out and ground the relay, and it should turn the compressor on. Figure out which side's your hot side. That's the hot side, so this one will be the uh, one that goes to the compressor. It's when the when it squeezes right there, it takes electricity from this little thing to this up to the other side and goes out that. So got the relay stubbed in there i hope it's right there's a convenient hole for it to hide out in this wire to come over here i made it too long we can zip tied up ain't no problem but one thing i got i was fixing to put a butt connector on there but i decided if we make different throttle bodies or i make them that might want to change so i just put a connector on there and kind of makes it easier to tote everything around Oh, that's what I was going to say. I just got to look, and this thing, 200,000 miles. If you pressure wash this thing, it looks brand new. I mean, it ain't got a speck of oil or nothing. So, never know. Maybe a new motor. Who knows? Man, everything's working too good. Uh, I hope y'all can hear this in video. I'm probably going to stick the camera down there where you can hear it. But you can hear, maybe see the compressor kicking in. I'm excited. Can't lie. Luckily, when I close this box, these flat spade connectors, I think it's going to push down on them so they can't pop out because there's, there's no telling what this Jeep's fixing to go through. I'm sure everybody knows this, but there's a high or high and a low pressure side to a compressor. So basically, this is the intake for the motor, same as the intake for that. So I'm going to cut that off. I don't think I have one, but I'm going to get a PCV filter. That'll be my intake, and i got to figure out on my high side what I'm going to do. Halfway through that last move there, I was starting to cut it, and I just looked down. I was like, wait a minute. So I cut it here and I'm gonna run it over here and get some kind of Y and just tap it into the pre-existing thing. That'll save me like 15 bucks on a PCV filter. I couldn't get the bolt out right there where the high side comes out. I didn't want to break it and have to go through all that trouble. So I just come over here, cut it. And I didn't have the right hose barb neither, but that'll do the trick just for testing. And that's what people ask how much those compressors put out. I've seen them where stuff is wrong and this gauge goes to 500 and i've seen them just buried at 500 so who knows but way more than enough pressure for the brakes i'm pretty sure i'm probably well let me do the math and i'll let you know in just a second before i run the hose i was going to show y'all i hope it works i haven't even tried it the first time man cut Try again. I hate that it's loud, but it is what it is. Got the controller. Got the hose stubbed out here. That's just at a pure idle, so I'm sure when you got it revved up, the brakes going to work sweet. I had to do like a surge thing. Kind of slow it down. I did some math and wow. I hope we don't ever have to get up there. And I hope you can read my writing. Let's see, at the two inch ram, if you do the math, it comes out to 6.28 inches of surface area. And 100 pounds per square inch would be 628 pounds. 
vice versa you can read if it for some reason went to 500 which i'm sure that would blow be 3200 pounds and you can tell i don't work out at all but i'm pretty sure nobody's leg can push what was the first one 600 pounds one leg so i'm pretty sure be plenty enough probably gonna break the brake pedal off it's fixing to run the hose anytime pretty much any cherokee basically grand cherokee probably right which i don't know i don't mess with them but if you gotta make a firewall break you can see i put a uh, put an x right above below the gas pedal where cable where it goes through there and i'll try to show you on the inside too that's usually where i run all my wires just make sure they don't get where your gas get in interfere with your gas pedal but you can see it's pretty open in there you know a little tip here we just get those face palm ideas i got to look and said this jeep will never be drove again so i don't know if you can see i took the gas pedal cable out that hose will just fit right through there what a dummy got some little tabs here i think i might have to trim them fit that then i'm thinking put something across here and yeah oh by the way highly recommend this to a friend well you've seen it earlier perfect perfect fit i didn't have to break the drill out got it marked gonna give it a little cut mark hard to do one-handed i'm gonna let that cool oh uh, let's see gotta figure out how i'm mounting this thing i guess i'll saddle clamp it whatever you want to call that but i've got some old sway bars i'm gonna use those as like uh, heim joints i guess and i'm gonna weld something to there so i'm gonna get on that got the lower one cut here now it's like i said i'm trying to make this universal but i think if i just drill a hole i mean i don't think drilling a hole every time you swap jeeps is a bad whatever the word is Got the hole drilled. You can tell, well, upside down. This goes down inside of there, so I gotta be able to bolt it. So I'm going to take a half 20 nut and then put a little taper in it so it'll go a little farther. So that's as far as it'll go. Starts at the, what do you call it, taper? Take a stepper bit. Got it reamed out there. That's the step of mine. It's all wore out from drilling certain stuff, but got a whole lot more better or more thread showing. I think it'll work. So I wound up, I got this and bolted in and it's more of an angle than I realized. So by the time you get it flexed out there, probably would still work. But since I ain't used uh, this side yet, I'm gonna cut it like right there. That way it'll be pointed straight at that one. Got a just classic piece of angle iron. I got the wrong side, but Either way, I'm going to probably saddle clamp mount the ram right there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and drill the holes before I weld this in there so I can use a drill press. I had, I had to trace the holes on the top side. Just stick it on a block of wood if you didn't didn't know to do that. Well, that's why I say you can't mark the holes like that. I didn't have a piece of metal small enough for what I was fixing to do. So I had this old harness. I'm going to cut it right there and I'll show you why might not be able to understand from this angle but i'm gonna weld just a little piece there because the ram's gonna be trying to push back and that saddle clamp probably will hold but that way it'll have to break that piece off you can always tell when your friend uses your welder last I know some of y'all probably want to see the whole video, but I just don't feel confident in our content to be that interesting to hang around for 45 minutes. But that's all for this video. But the next video, I do at least give you a little sneak peek of driving, and that's not in. Appreciate it.